Hello, everybody. You're listening to the Startup Secrets for Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Shelby Olschlager, and our mission here is to help entrepreneurs make a difference and navigate the messy world of startup or relaunch. Join me today where we dig deep with our guests to give you the best concepts and strategies to fast track your business. Today, our special guest is Darlene Hawley with us. And Darlene, I'm really excited to chat with you. So thank you so much for being on the show, first of all. Also, just to get started, can you give us a little bit of an introduction of what you do? Yeah. Hi, Shelby. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. And as you shared, my name is Darlene Holly. Um, I'm a personal branding and online business coach. And I also um, really love to support both entrepreneurs who are looking to speak up, use their voice, make an impact in the world, and really just give back from their heart. Most of the clients that I work with are what I call ambitious, heart-centered um, entrepreneurs or a rising business leader inside of an organization. And they're really practicing their visibility, putting themselves out there, seeking and seeing how they can support the world in a bigger and better way. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And yeah, just the power of that from ourselves, it all starts with us. I'm a firm believer. So if we're able to share that message or share ourselves in such a way that we're going to make that impact is very, very powerful. So how exactly did you get into this line of work? Yeah. So um, I'm about to come up on 16 years being a business coach. So 16 years ago, um, I was looking for, actually it was longer than 16 years ago, if I'm being honest, probably like 20 years ago, I was like, okay, there's got to be something more out there. I was trying to uncover and discover for myself, like what it is that I wanted to do with my life. And um, at the time I was in retail management, which was a fun, great career at first. And I I was able to work my way up really quickly um, inside retail management. And I was doing HR training and development, which I loved, but I also had this like yearning inside me. I was like, I feel, felt like I was supposed to do something bigger, something more with my life. Mm -hmm. And I also was a young mom. So, um, I had my oldest son who is 26 now, which is crazy. Um, when I was just out of high school, so I had just graduated high school and a few months later, um, I had him and I was at the time having a lot of what I call mom guilt (laughs) because I was spending a ton of work or a ton of time um, working in retail management. And when I was at work, I felt guilty because I wasn't with him. And then when I was at home, my demanding job felt like it was always calling and somebody was reaching out needing support or something was going on. And I was looking at the time for what I thought was balance. And I was trying to figure out like, how am I going to continue to be home with my son and like give him a great life. And then also balance like how I wanted to show up in my career and what I wanted to do. And it was about 20 years ago that, um, I had a big impact in my life and that was losing my mom. Um, she was taken suddenly in a car accident and I almost lost my son at the time as well. He was five at that point. And wow. I just knew there was, like, it was like that instant reminder that life is so short and we don't know how much time we ha- have here on this earth. And I, like I was saying before, I just knew I was meant for more. I wanted to be able to make a bigger impact in the world. And it was during that time that I really got really still and quiet and kept like searching, like, what, what is it that I'm looking for? What is it I want to do? And, you know, part of that journey as I was healing from losing my mom and almost losing my son was discovering who I wanted to be. And so I went on a, a, I guess, a mission to figure out who the heck I was and what I wanted to do with my life. And that was um, what landed me into um, first, I became a loan officer for a hot minute, as I call it, because it was a good catapult to get out of retail management, but it definitely wasn't my life calling. I didn't really enjoy it. Um, I actually hated it. (laughs) So I got out pretty quickly. And um, during that discovery process, I found um, business coaching and I was like, this looks super interesting. Like what the heck is a business coach? It was back when, you know, coaching was still kind of on the, it was, it was around, but it was, wasn't the, the word wasn't used as much and it wasn't quite as prevalent as it is today. And so I applied for a job or what I thought was a job. And I ended up purchasing a franchise and becoming a business owner um, as a business coach. And I fell in love with um, just supporting people. Part of my background before that, like I could always think back, like even in retail management or even back to high school, I was always the person everybody came to when they needed advice, when they had questions. I'm naturally a really curious person. So I love to ask questions and dig deep and like help people uncover, um, uncover and discover what's going on for them. And so when I found business coaching, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is my soul's calling. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what I'm naturally good at. It's what I enjoy doing. And so here we are 16 years later, (laughs) Um, I'm a business coach. And part of that process is 
you know, it was hard going through like the grief and like the uncovering and discovering, but I think each of us have such, um, a place for ourselves where we need to show up and really uncover and find who we are and how we want to show up and how we want to serve. And for me, that's always been coaching and supporting and helping other people. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely change every single way of how that happened for me if I could go back um, in time. But it was also a big blessing for me because I don't know how long I would have sat in that really comfortable job where I knew what I was doing. I knew how to show up. I knew what I was required each day. But I, you know, I think so many of us crave something more. And sometimes we have to push ourselves out there to find out what that is. And sometimes it's within an organization. And other times for me, it was, you know, starting my own business. Mm -hmm. Wow. I really appreciate that story and sharing that with us. And the power of your story is everything. Like I'm sure you talk about with some of your clients and being able to share that. So other people can see that journey of what it takes to, like you said, you're made for more, you wanted more. So how are you going to get there? And, you know, your journey is so unique for you. So when you're helping some of your clients and whatnot, what are the things that you do to help them to uncover their story, to use that as a motive to keep growing and to keep putting their messages out there? Yeah, great question. Um, I think a lot of, I I teach a lot of storytelling in my business. I I found for myself, once I um, discovered that I needed to stop connecting everybody else in the beginning, when I started my business, I was so focused on being a connector and helping other people meet and, you know, helping them get clients and referring business back and forth. I had this aha moment that I wasn't allowing myself to really dive deep into conversation and for people to really truly get to know and see me. And I discovered for myself that I was like, Ooh, if I actually stick around long enough in a conversation and start sharing stories of how I run my business or how I support my clients, or if I'm telling stories of, you know, case studies, um, sharing, you know, how one of my clients has been able to go from, you know, having, you know, 500 to a thousand dollars a month in sales to making the income that they're looking to make to support their family and be able to travel and do the work that they love. That was when people would start to lean in a little bit. They'd get more curious. They would ask more questions. We would be able to dive into a deeper um, dialogue with each other. And so I kind of fell upon the storytelling piece of it um, pretty naturally, just because I do love storytelling. Um, I think when I think back to my childhood, even like my favorite memories are sitting around a campfire, camping with my family and everybody's just sharing stories, whether they're ghost stories or mm-hmm. that, you know, they were talking about, um, just stuff that's been happening in the family or what's been going on or hearing, you know, things about grandparents and different things. And I realized that those were the connecting things with the people that I was meeting. It wasn't really about who I like the work that I'm doing and, you know, telling them all the amazing things of why they should hire me or why they should work with me. They were connecting and building that no like and trust factor really quickly when we share story. And then I also heard a quote, um, this was just probably like four or five years ago. And I forget who says it. I always forget his name, um, Jeff something, but he said, it said that people are 22 times more likely to remember you when you share story and the work that you're doing. And I was like, Ooh, this makes so much sense. It got me excited because I was like, I was already kind of fell upon it myself. And now there was data (laughs) to go to back it up and to support it. And it's so true. I know so many of my clients, when they first um, start working with me, they start identifying what their story is and whether they're, you know, on podcast interviews or they're speaking on stages or they're just writing a blog. When they start to incorporate story into what they're doing, they start to realize that people start reaching out. People start asking more questions. People um, respond to their emails. People, you know, send them a direct message on social media because that story piece, like people are not going to remember, you know, the five tips to telling your story, but they might remember some of the stories that I share while I'm talking about those five tips to building your personal brand. And so it's powerful and impactful. Right. So I always tell my clients, I'm like, everything you do, I don't care if it's one sentence mm-hmm. or if it's a couple paragraphs, like share some story and what you're doing. It, you're, you're prompting aha moments for your audience and allowing them to really get pulled in and to connect with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does make so much sense. And it also just makes me think about you're going to be connecting people that are going to resonate the most with your story. So you're going to be getting clients that feel that connection with you. And those are your ultimate dream clients. So for, for you, how has that process been for, you know, you've been doing it for a while, but how has your growth been with you building your clients and being able to help them? Yeah, I would say my growth has been just connecting at deeper levels. Mm -hmm. Um, Part of the journey when we are putting ourselves out there is we're like you started to say, like we're attracting 
the dream clients that we want to work with. We're, and then we're also repelling the people that are not a good fit for us. And I think one of the things that so many of my clients come to me and they're like, you know, I want to work with everybody and I can support everyone. And, you know, I'm really good at what I do. And I always like encourage them to niche back a little bit, like pull it really in, like get really crystal clear on who they want to serve and not just, you know, that maybe they're, they're working with coaches or they're working with authors or they're pulling in landscapers, like whatever, whatever um, niche group that they're looking to pull in, like really get clear, like what are some of those descriptive words that really describe that person? Mm. Are they people pleasers? Are they ambitious? Are they heart centered? Are they, you know, family, uh, family members with teenagers in their household, like get clear on some of those pieces and that's one of the secret tools I feel like so often we, we hear demographics, like you have to use the demographics when we're calling in our ideal clients. And yeah, we do want to look at demographics. I think they're important, but the psychographics is really where it's at. So when we start to um, pull in some of the descriptive words that really describe them, mm-hmm. and we're also hitting on like, if your ideal client is struggling right now and they wake up at two o'clock in the morning with insomnia, what are they worried about? What are they doing a search for? Um, I always tell my clients, I'm like, there's three places we go when we can't sleep at night and it's either YouTube, Pinterest, or Google. (laughs) And we usually are typing in like how to cure insomnia or Mm -hmm. how do I make more money in my business or how do I build a personal brand so I can finally start attracting dream clients in and do this work that I love. So I don't have to go back to a job that I didn't love or that wasn't lighting me up or wasn't, you know, filling my soul. Mm -hmm. So I'm always like, okay, so those, like when you identify like the answer to those questions, start writing blog posts, right? Or go have a podcast episode called that, create a YouTube video off of those things, because those are the things that are going to kind of leave what I call breadcrumbs out in the universe. So that when people are looking for you, they can easily find you. So many business coaches, I feel like teach, you know, go out and spend, you know, hours on social media and do like five posts a day and spend hours of your life um, on social media. And I've tried it and it's exhausting. (laughs) It doesn't work. Um, I mean, it can work. You can absolutely get clients here and there from it. But when you can create a strategy where you're putting yourself out there and you're you're putting feelers out. So when people are looking for you, they can actually find you. It makes it so much easier for you to show up and do your job. You don't have to spend hours looking for clients. You're actually calling in the dream clients that you know you're meant to work with. And they're going to listen to your story. They're going to feel called in because of the connecting pieces. Their story will probably not mirror your story exactly but they're going to see something in you that's pulling and highlighting stuff from their life and their past. And that's, what's going to make them feel like they know you, they like you and they trust you so quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And it even just makes me think of if you come with that approach and just, like you said, you have these things that you're going through. So you share it out into the world and it makes it a lot easier to make content that way because it's authentic. It's real. It's exactly what you need or what you're going through. So it just, to me, it's like, oh, that would be easy if you just have almost, I guess, like the desire you want to put it out there. So you are, you know, like, it's just, you're not even thinking about it as far as, you know, like maybe mental blocks or anything like that go. So are there anything like that, that people face that you notice that's common that are stopping them from, I guess, like putting themselves into the universe to actually attract these clients? Mm, so many things <laughs> we get in our own ways so much, right? I feel like um, I know for my, I'll speak for myself, not for everybody else, but at entrepreneurship has been like the biggest personal development journey mm-hmm. that I ever knew I was going on. <laughs> like most of the work that I'm doing on myself as an entrepreneur is probably 80% mindset. And I'm constantly journaling, listening to podcasts, you know, Googling stuff myself or going on to Pinterest and looking for ideas and, you know, inspiration. And so many of my clients, when they come in, they're afraid that their story doesn't matter, that no one's going to want to listen to it. Like, why would anybody care about my story? Like, how are these pieces even relevant to what's going on for them? And as we start, you know, to, to dive into the storytelling process and to really get clear on like what it is they want to be known for, what they're passionate about and how they want to show up for the world, they start to uncover like, oh, like I actually have a lot of stories inside me (laughs) that I can share. I have my clients create what I call a story bank. And they just, it's just a Google doc. And that anytime they have something happen, they write the story in the Google doc. Or um, in the beginning, we do like a massive brainstorming session where I have them sit down for like 15, 20 minutes and just, you know, pen and paper and write down every story that they can think of. 
And they usually go back and they're like, I didn't even know that I had that many stories within me because most of the time, like if you had to sit down right this moment, Shelby and be like, I need to write a story. Like most of us would go like stare at a blank page yeah. and we would have mm-hmm. nothing right that. That's, I know myself and most of my clients are like, there's a blank screen in front of me or a blank piece of paper. Like, I don't know where to go from here. So when they have their story bank and they have all these different stories, they can start to go in and pull those pieces from the story and be like, oh, I can write a, um, a blog post about this and I can share this story. Mm-hmm. Um, and oftentimes, um, part of the work that I do, um, is I'm a certified facilitator for a program called step into your moxie. And we teach in that inside that program. Like when we think about storytelling, we want to first identify, like, what's the aha moment we want people to have. And then we work it backwards from there and we go, okay, what's a couple of questions that we can ask to prompt that aha. And now what story can I pair with this to make sure that I'm able to show up and, share a story that's going to be relevant. It's going to prompt the aha that I want my client or my prospects or whoever I'm talking to to have. And here's a couple of questions to kind of get them moving forward in the direction that I need them to go. So they can have the aha moment for their self. They get some clarity. And it also makes them think like, Ooh, now I'm curious. Like that was a really good question. And you got me thinking like, I want to work more with you because you're prompting just different types of discoveries and within myself that I didn't even know were possible. So there's like that piece to it where you can, you know, start to work the process backwards and really facilitate ahas that get people to take action and allow them to start to speak up more. It helps. It's that ripple effect that I think we're looking for so much in the world is like when we speak up and share our story, we share our message with the world. We share, you know, what's important, what matters to us, whether it's, you know, politics, social justice, um, just letting people know about our business and the work that we do, or maybe we're, you know, rallying for a nonprofit that we Um, support within our community. When we start to speak up and share those ideas, it gives that ripple effect and allows other people to step up and take action and, and not be so worried about how they're going to say it or what they're going to say, but giving them the ability that they know they can speak up and trust that their voice is going to, you know, be heard by the people that it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Very powerful. And it's kind of cool. I like the idea of coaching where like you're on your own journey to discover these things and then you're also able to help these people while you discover as well so with that it's like it's just always evolving and these yeah. aha moments happen to us and then they happen to our clients as well which is pretty awesome and it just keeps it like you said that whole personal development it never stops which is my favorite part about the whole entrepreneurial journey because it's yeah it's- want that like we're all wanting that something to give us that fuel and that fire to be like I want to grow and change so for anyone listening um and they're just kind of curious with you and your work how like how would you describe your ideal clients like who would you like to attract based on your stories yeah so most I work with two different groups of people so I I do a lot of one-to-one coaching with entrepreneurs Um, typically they are solopreneurs. They're either a coach, a consultant, an author. They're just starting out. They have a passion. They love doing something specific, um, in the world and they want to really call in their dream clients. So I work a lot with those types of people. And then I also work, um, with rising leaders that want to start to speak up and use their voice. And oftentimes, uh, I think that my favorite thing about the work that I do is, most of the time we're preparing for like big high stake conversations, right? Like we want to ask for a sale in our business, or we want to have a hard conversation with a a colleague or coworker. Sometimes it's even our spouse or our kids or um, important people in our lives. And it feels hard. It feels scary. And so one of the things that I love about the work that I do is I, I help them start to practice those conversations and those stories and what I call low stake conversations. They're very, easy, they're low, they're silly, they're fun, they're, you know, playful. Mm -hmm. Um, And we practice that muscle, we practice using those pieces, so we can step up and start doing it in bigger ways when they actually matter, right? Like if we need to go and make a big presentation, or we need to um, ask for a raise at work, or if we're asking for the sale, like that, it can cause a lot of sensation in our body that makes us, you know, nervous, we have the butterflies, and all those different things. And so when we practice in fun, easy, silly, fun ways, where it's playful, it makes it easier to step up and own what we're doing. So whether you're a rising leader who is asking for more with inside your organization, or if you're an entrepreneur who just wants the visibility, the marketing, they want to be able to be seen so they can really call in their dream clients. You're who I'm like, you're like the perfect person I want to talk to because that's where I can really help you shine in both of those areas. Mm -hmm. 
Cool. I like that. It's yeah, it's so cool. Like I love this type of work because it is, you can feel your passion in it and wanting to help these people. And like that ripple effect, like you said, is so powerful and really, you know, like you're just continuously growing and changing. So with that, where you are now, you've been doing it for quite a while. Do you have your next 12 months plan? Like, where would you like to see your business in the following year? Mm, I'm, I'm a big planner. Um, I'm slowing things down right now just because, you know, we're going into summertime, but I feel like um, over the next 12 months, I envision doing tons of more um, leadership opportunities inside of organizations where I'm going in and really working with um, the sales teams or um, mm-hmm. communication and messaging with inside the organization so that the team can start to facilitate more sales, have more fun, um, and really um, connect and jive together more. Mm-hmm. And then on the solopreneur side um, with my coaching, I just envision keep continuing to support coaches and experts and consultants and those leaders who just know that they're, they're, me- they're meant for more. They want to put themselves in bigger visibility opportunities, whether it's pitching themselves to be on stages or they want to be on more podcasts, but really identifying for them, like what's the right way for me to shine. So mm-hmm. often we see somebody else doing something and we feel like we have to show up and do the exact same thing. And I've learned <laughs> the hard way that, that that doesn't always work for me. It doesn't work for my clients. Um, mm-hmm. I had one client recently who came to me and she was doing all these different marketing strategies that were not getting her any results. And when we sat back and we looked at it, we found that she loved audio. She did not like video. She wanted to, um, to speak more um, in person versus um, virtually. And so we started doing podcasting and um, pitching ourselves for associations and conferences. And she's having so much fun right now going out there and growing her business because she found the ways that she wanted to show up for herself. So Mm -hmm. I just really want to support more people that like to make that impact be visible and have fun doing it. Like we're, we're running organizations, we're running businesses, Mm -hmm. like let's show up and have fun. Let's not make it so it's hard and it feels icky and, you know, slimy, sleazy, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like the sales type of um, feeling can so often feel like let's do it in a fun, playful way that allows us to have um, our passion shine through. Yeah. And it just makes me think that, like, like you said earlier, it's like, oh, the business coach, write five blog posts, do this, do this, where it's like, if you just, like you said, do what is right for you. Like if you don't want video, like this girl's lady's example, she didn't want to be on video. So it's like, okay, let's do podcasting and it's fun. And like, that's such a good way that, like you said, you can keep it playful and fun and what actually works for them so they can keep growing. And I think that's a really important message, definitely for myself to be like, don't feel like you have to do everything, even if it's the things that you don't want to do just because you're trying to get your message out. But if you do what is right for you, then it's, again, you're going to probably make a better impact because you're actually enjoying that as well. Um, Do you have anything like any sort of, while you've been going through this business of coaching others, have you had any surprising obstacles or challenges that you've had to face to be progressing in your own coaching business? Mm -hmm. Always. (laughs) Always. <laughs> um, there's always things that come up, whether it's me getting in my own way because I get stuck in my head. Mm-hmm. Um, I've gotten a lot better. I feel like over, especially the past like five years, I really have started listening more to my intuition mm-hmm. and my heart versus staying in my head. Um, so often I feel like my biggest enemy is like, you know, the the occasional self-doubt, the, the worry the you know, am I good enough? Am I worthy? Oh, somebody else is already out there doing this. Like, who am I to step into this market space and have my name um, thrown into that, into the mix. And I think those are the things that have um, been, been my biggest obstacles to overcome or over, to overcome. Like I shared before, like mindset has been so much of the work that I do. And so um, I can continue to get in my own way. So I, I'm someone that I, I call myself a life learner because I, if I'm constantly learning and showing up and doing the work for myself, then I can get out of my own way and I can show up and the real work is putting myself out there so that I can support other people. If I keep getting my own own way, then how am I going to be there for other people when they need to shine themselves and they need to be more visible? They need to put themselves out there for marketing or they want to speak up um, because they have a really big um, desire to support other people. So I think my biggest challenge is getting out of my own way. And so I continue to do the work, whether it's, you know, reading books, hiring coaches, myself, um, 
putting myself in opportunities and places where it feels scary sometimes. One of my mantras that I used a couple of years back that really worked for me was I do scary things. <laughs> and I would tell myself like, okay, I'm going to wake up this morning or this morning I'm going to do something scary. Like what's something scary? And maybe it's pitching myself um, to be at a big speaking opportunity. Or sometimes that scary thing might've felt like just following up with a prospect that I knew I could really support. And I wanted to be able to be there for them. And they were having some self-doubt themselves. So making sure that I was, you know, following back up and staying in touch and soothing those fears that that person might be having in those moments. So I think just paying attention, um, watching those obstacles that I'm aware of that are coming up and just continuing to do the work. The more that I'm out there serving, the more I learn for myself and the more I can give back um, and support my mission as well as my clients. Mm -hmm. That's great inspiration. I think to have to, for yourself to keep showing up and doing that. And I love the scary, like I am a firm believer, (laughs) but it's like, if something scares me and I'm like, I don't know if I want to do it. It's like, that's my sign that I'm like, okay, shall we, we have to do this now Ah. because I had that feeling. So I really like that you shared that Um, for people listening that really resonate with your message and they want to learn more and potentially work with you. Where can they find you? Yeah, the best places to connect is my website, which is darlingholly.com, um, that you can go to my story page, read a little bit more about my story, learn more about um, the work that I do and how I support my clients. Um, and then if you are on social media, my really the only platform I hang out these days is on LinkedIn. So if you're um, there, it's just um, Darlene Holly. You can find me pretty easily just with my name. Um, but come connect, say hi, send me a DM and um, let me know what you were inspired by today's conversation, or if there was a tip or a tool, or if you have a question or a follow-up, um, I'd love to connect with you and just um, get to know you and see if working together might be a great fit. And if not, that's fine too. Sometimes we build strategic alliance partners, partnerships. Sometimes we just become lifelong friends, but I love connecting with my community and just, you know, building those relationships. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, I appreciate that for myself and everyone listening. I'm sure that they definitely took a lot away from this conversation. Uh, One final thing that I want to leave listeners to really start thinking about, do you have one thing that you want us to all think about to finish up this conversation? Yeah, I think to end today's conversation, show up as yourself. I think there's so many of so many of us that like, you know, we have comparisonitis, we're worried about what other people are doing or what they're thinking, or if they're going to like us, or if they're not going to like us, or if we're going to be included, it makes me feel like like, uh, just saying that maybe go back to like my teenage years where I was so busy trying to fit in Mm -hmm. that as entrepreneurs and as leaders, like it's our job to stand out. And the best way we can stand out is be true to ourselves, be authentic, be vulnerable, be real, share more stories, build more relationships and really focus on just being yourself. When you show up as you, you don't have to worry about the competition anymore because there's nobody built exactly like you. They don't have your skill sets, your training, your experience. They didn't grow up in your household. They don't have the values that you do. So just stay true to you and have fun doing the work that you love by being you. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love that so much. Thank you so much for sharing some of your wisdom with us today. I uh, really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Shelby, for having me. It was fun chatting with you and sharing more of my story. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, if anyone's listening that wants to learn more, definitely go check her out because you got, you got the wisdom. (laughs) I do. And I didn't mention it, but um, if you go to my website, darleneholly.com, I do have um, a free gift on my homepage. It's called six steps to attract and stand out. And it's um, a a very short, simple action packed guide that has six tips that you can um, implement immediately today that will help you start standing out more increase your visibility and really help you um, call in and attract those dream clients so you can continue to show up and do the work that you love. Perfect. Yeah. I'll be checking that out. Awesome. Thanks, Shelby. Thank you.